Hi, this is Maginone, and here's um, a review uh, slash update for Monster Hunter Orange. This is the third volume. Now, I thought I'd do periodically these updates on the progress of a manga, and uh, that way you get an idea of is the manga good or bad, um, how does it hold up over time. So I won't do it for every volume, but I'll do it for usually every couple volumes. So the first one I'm doing it for is Monster Hunter. Now, I'm really enjoying Monster Hunter, but I didn't think I was going to. I remember seeing some early pages, and I just basically saw, hmm, eh, and then that was it. It, it just didn't, I thought of it as too comical for monster hunting, you know. If you remember the PSP game, or if you played the PSP game, it, it's epic in the sense of you just hunt monsters and it's the bigger the better and you get big awesome weapons and armor and stuff like that so take seeing it from a comedic point of view I was I was a little worried but I'm glad I bought it because so far it's actually really entertaining um, the story is centering around Shiki and his two companions and if you notice he, they have two female companions so this way um, they can appeal to the a wider audience of males. Uh, you get a girl who has the cat girl sword type look and you have a girl with the big boobs with a big gun. So it covers a lot of bases. Now, if you remember, just a quick update, Shiki is basically this kid who was found uh, by a monster hunter and he basically uh, was was given the task, I guess you can say, of looking for or to finishing a dream so the hunter that he that basically raised him was like a seal a seal hunter and he the guy made Shiki a, a seal hunter also and a seal hunter basically is a hunter that isn't really restricted by the rules of a monster hunting he can pretty much do whatever he wants and only a, a small number of people can actually earn the right to do that and most importantly, being a seal hunter would give him the ability to hunt down the uh, uh, Thunder Dragon. Now, this issue here, this volume, gives you a little bit of background on, on his background as a young child. And it really set the stage for the, his, I guess you can say his personality and things like that now. Uh, he was born uh, to a small village that got burned down. And he basically was living in the jungle, fighting to survive. But yet, he has this innocent viewpoint on things, and he just wants to take down the uh, the next monster type thing. So he has that same type of personality, older meaning. It doesn't matter how big the monster is. He's just like, let's go kill it. It's going to be fun type thing. Look at the fur on this monster. It's going to keep us warm. And it's it it's um. He gives you this type of personality that makes you want to join in the battle versus, you know, the ones that just go, oh, maybe not, I'll just um, go hide. Now, at the same time that that's going on, we, we get a little bit more information of this tournament that's going on, or supposedly it'll give you a map to uh, to the, the Thunder Dragon, and... But if you lose, you have to turn in your weapon. Basically, what you're doing is you're fighting for your weapons. And it's an underground match, and there's something, sh you know, shady about this whole thing. So we're going to see more on that later. Um, I guess you can say the one drawback I have for this, this manga, and keep in mind, this is only me, and from my point of view, and it probably won't affect 99% of you out there. Or maybe not 95. Anybody who reads Fairy Tale and One Piece will, will understand what I mean. When when you see and read Shiki, uh, his personality and has this... Like when I'm reading it, I'm, I'm envisioning Natsu and Luffy. And part of it's because they kind of have similar uh, personalities and to a certain degree a look. Um, I mean, it's not quite the same, but, you know, since it's the same art, uh, creator for Fairy Tale, it's the, it, it's mostly the style of the character that uh, makes me think of Luffy and um, Natsu. Uh, the only reason why I'm grouping Luffy into it is because um, 
the fairy tale characters look like they were just teleported out of One Piece, and and again it, they have that same type of you know the the three characters are forming a bond like One Piece, and um, it's just the way like I said the way their attitudes are. It's very straightforward. Let's go on an adventure. We have a quest. We have a goal, and we're we're going straight there as fast as we can type of thing. Um, but overall, I'm really enjoying it. It's um, I guess you can say it's a pleasure to read. The monsters look pretty cool. Uh, what they've been doing is they've been showing like a short picture. I mean, uh, not a short picture. Let me see if I can get it. A shadowy picture, and then what they'll do is they'll do something like this where it's a little bit bigger, they tell you the monster, and they tell you the threat level. So that way you know how dangerous this thing is supposed to be. Um, and then every once in a while they'll throw in Monster Hunter references, like um, they're out in the freezing, and so they give, there's like a hot, hot beverage type thing, and then you can tell it's, all of this is basically straight from the game, which is fine. It's After all, it is called Monster Hunter, and if you didn't incorporate things from the game into this book, the fans of Monster Hunter would probably be pissed. Uh, overall, three volumes in, I'm very pleased, and it's getting better, in my opinion. And um, I just hope that by the end of the story, it'll be, it'll have a good payout. Uh, hopefully. So, anyways, if you have any comments or questions, let me know. Rate the video up or down. Let me know what you think, and um, I'll put up more reviews later. So, until next time.